Hey VC, it's Shad with Final New Wave. The video that you're about to watch, I actually recorded three weeks ago, um, but um, I'm gonna apologize in advance because it's, I, I wanted to do some needle drops and play some music in it and I just couldn't make it work and make it sound decent. And um, I, I, I ordered parts off of, you know, different cables and stuff off of Amazon. I just couldn't get stuff to work right. So uh, I decided to kind of re-edit the video a little bit around the needle drop parts. And also I ended up just kind of mumbling and stumbling all over my words a lot. And so if it's choppy, I apologize. Uh, but you get, the, uh, you get the gist of what I'm trying to do. And instead of needle drops, I've created a uh, playlist um, of 15 songs from the band. And that is included in the uh, description below. Go, um, you know, open up, um, open that playlist up and, and give it a listen. There's a lot of great songs in there. Uh, so without further ado, I present to you my three week old video on Fruer and Underworld. Hey VC, hey New Wavers, it's Shad with Vinyl New Wave. Uh, coming to you this week with a artist dedicated video. Um, I've had this artist in my head all week. I've been listening to him in the car. I've been listening to him at work while I'm working. And um, I've just, I've had him all in my head. So I thought I should just do a video about him this week. So we're going to do it. I'm going to show pretty much everything that I have by them. It's by no means a definitive collection, but I'm going to show you pretty much everything I have from them. Um, and uh, I'm going to try and do maybe a needle drop or two on some of the lesser known songs, uh, stuff that I think is really good. So uh, let's get started. It all started back in the early 80s. Um, a guy named Carl Hyde and another guy named Rick Smith met in art school in Wales. And they decided to form a band. And so they formed a band called Screen, Screen Gems uh, with a Z. And they recorded uh, one single. They were really inspired at the time by craft work and the early Human League stuff. They were really inspired by all this electronic music. And so they formed this band, Scream Gems, and they did, did one single. Um, I don't think it did very well. I don't think it took off um, at all. But, um, and unfortunately, I don't have that uh, single. I've, I've looked into pur purchasing it, but uh, it's... On, on Discogs, it's going for like 300 to $400. A little out of the budget for right now. Um, however, <laughs> the most you'll see the most money I ever spent on a record was, was from these guys. So they, they, they recorded this single and then they recruited a, a drummer and another a bassist and a, I think another keyboard guy. They, re recorded a few, or they recruited a few more people into the band and they released their first single uh, but they did not have a name for the band. They had a symbol. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, long before Prince uh, made that somewhat fashionable to have a symbol for a name, they, these folks had a symbol for the name of the band. And their first two singles, I believe, were released with just the symbol as the name of the band. Now the song is called, that initial song is called Doot Doot. And probably you've heard it before. This is a cool little picture disc um, that features the uh, the logo of the band. And um, there's a lot of the the song "Doot Doot" actually ended up. It ends up on a lot of '80s um, '80s compilations, '80s new wave compilations. Uh, like this one, this is a French one that I picked up in France uh, a number of years ago. It has doot doot on it. Um, and there's a lot of, and it's, and it's shown up in movies, it's shown up on TV. Um, so it's a, it, well, it never did, hu it was never huge. I think it got to like 20 something in the charts in the UK. I don't think it ever charted in the United States. But, um, but it's it's pretty well known song, and I had a friend that um, that 
his mom was having a garage sale and I guess she worked at a radio station um, for a while and she had this big stack box of uh, promos. And so I went down there uh, to the garage sale and thumbed, thumbed through them and, and there were two copies of Doot Doot. And these are, it's a promo. It's not even like the gold stamp promo. It's just a flat out a promo of Doot Doot. And she had two of them and they're, they were in perfect condition. At the time, um, the local radio stations here were really into Doot Doot. They were playing it all the time. They were, people were requesting it all the time. This was late eighties. Um, and uh, my friend Todd uh, Newcomb, who's a DJ on the radio here in Salt Lake, he came uh, to the club I was DJing at for an for a on what do you call it a on location thing and I played this and he said wow that's the cleanest copy of Dude Dude I've ever heard so um, so I have so I I got that and I've, I I still treasure this to, to this day it's it's in a just amazing condition and it sounds amazing um, while I was in France I also found this it's Pick this up. It's another copy of the 12 inch with the re remix, but I don't know if you can tell, but it's it's embossed. Maybe if I take it out of the sleeve. It's the cover is embossed like snake skin. It's kind of a cool little uh, uh, cool little version of it. But anyways, so after th this single, they released another one. Um, called Matters of the Heart. And um, this is the 12-inch single for Matters of the Heart. And it's got a remix, and then there's a B-side called You're a Hoover on here. Um, and still just symbol for the name. Well, came time for them to release their album. And... Um, they were signed to CBS Records, and CBS Records came to them and said, look, you guys, you've got to have a name. We can't just put it out with a symbol. It's just it's not going to work. You, you need a name for this album. And so they came up with a name, Fruer. I'm not sure exactly how it was that they came up with it. But they just said, nah, the pronunciation of the symbol is Fruer. And so the record company came up with the spelling. And on the album, the release is called Doot Doot. This one is really, this is not the first copy of this album. I also had this album, I had a US copy, US pressing of this album before I left to go to France, but um, the liner notes were in black and white, but um, the inner sleeve on this one is printed in full color, has all the words of the songs and stuff. Um, it's actually a pretty good album. It's, uh, it's definitely, you know, it's it's got some kind of ambient themes to it. It's got, it's got some kind of eerie, you know, out there kind of sounds. It's kind of a fun. It's it's fun. Um, another single off of that album um, is "Riders of the Night" or "Riders in the Night." Sorry, and this is the 12-inch single for "Riders in the Night" on Epic. This is a U.S. one, and it is also a promo. I didn't realize that most everything I had out of these guys is a promo. Um, but yeah, this is Riders in the Night, and then it's got another version of Doot Doot um, on the, as a B side to that 12 inch. Um, at some point, that album got released on a CD. I'm not sure how official. Um, this CD is, um, this I think came out in the late nineties. Um, and I picked it up and they've got, and they added, they took a couple of the songs off of the next album and put them on here as bonus tracks. So, and we'll, we'll address those in a minute here. So after, um, after that album, a couple year break, they came up with another album, um, call uh, another album called get us out of here um which is this here and um this album was only released in holland and germany i believe it was 
Um, so this, this is a Holland pressing um, of the album. And this has some great songs on it. Um, Look in the Back for Answers was the, uh, per, was the first single off of that. Or yeah, maybe the second. Um, there was also a song called The Devil in Darkness, which is a great song. I do not have that single. I don't have that 12 inch. I, it's on my want list and at some point I'll buy it. It's, um, it's not that expensive. It's going for under $10, probably even under $5, but I need, I need to, I just need to buckle down and say, I'm going to buy it and buy it. So, um, and then they also, uh, released the song, the piano song on just the seven inch record. So, but they did release, um, a single called Look in the Back for Answers. And I have both the seven inch here. Uh, this is the UK pressing of that seven inch. And this is the 12 inch single for Look in the Back for Answers. Now, um, this record here holds the distinction of the record that I have paid the most dollars for. And um, today, in today's, today's world, that's, it's kind of ridiculous how much I paid for it. Um, I paid 75 for it at the time. I and mean, this was like 90, 91. Um, and I, you know, I was a young teenager with money to blow. Um, but I was also a DJ. And uh, the reason that I spent the money on this record was not for looking the back for answers, but for the B-side, which is Hey Ho, Away We Go. Uh, somehow one of the radio stations got a hold of that song, like a, you know, a, a, somebody had made a cassette of copy of that song and they played it on the radio and it's got a really cool dancey rhythm. And so, it was just like, it was a really popular song around here in Utah. I don't know why. I, I don't know if it was isolated to here in Utah, but it was really popular here. And um, I always get requests for it in the club. I, people come up and ask, well, oh, sorry, I don't have it. I don't, you know, I'm not going to play a recording off the radio, you know, at the club. So uh, I went into my local record store that I spent all my money at when I was a teenager. Um, it was called Mad Platter Records up in Sugar House. And well, I was chatting with the guys. I knew the guys, I, I had gotten to know the guys that owned the store pretty well because literally I was there almost every, every week buying records. And, um, and, and, and I got kind of joking around, well, I wish I had, you know, wish I had the Frewer with Hey Ho, Away We Go on it. And he goes, the, the guy that owns the store kind of goes, well, come here. And so he takes me back to the back of the store um, behind his curtain there. And he had this one and like two or three other Fruer records. I think Devil in Darkness 12 inch and um, another Doot Doot and one or two other things. And he had this one and I was like, that's the one I want. And he said, well, I've got another guy that's already, you know, he's already kind of said he wanted it. And I told him I'd hold it for him. And I said, but I have cash right now. And he says, well, it's $75. And I said, okay. So he said, okay. So we walked up to the front and I grabbed it. So I bought it out from underneath somebody. I don't know who, um, but it was a good buy because it was a draw to the club. I mean, people knew that I had the song and people came to hear it. So, um, so yeah, look in the back for answers. And this is, and the version of Hey Ho Away We Go on this uh, is different than the version on the seven inch. I picked this seven, seven inch up in France. The, the timing, the, the, the track length is a little different. I don't, I think it's just like this one fades out a little earlier, but I can't, I don't remember for sure. So, um, and on that, this reissue, Hey Ho, Away We Go and The Devil in Darkness are both on this. And that's why I'm, I, I, I'm just, I'm not sure about the officialness of this CD because those two tracks were just kind of, I don't know, anyways. 
So, after that album, after the Get Us Out of Here album, um, it didn't have, it didn't get a whole lot of success. And so it, uh, so they kind of folded and the, the band kind of disbanded a little bit. But Rick and Carl Hyde uh, stuck together and they started making more music together and they formed, oh, rewind a little bit. Uh, while Fruer was working on these, they actually scored a film. Um, it is a, um, it's, it's an underground f British horror film that was written by Clive Barker um, called Underworld. And also, but it also goes by another, um, another name. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. I was just reading about it earlier. But so when they formed this new band, they decided to name it after that movie. And um, that movie was Underworld. So the band is called Underworld. And their first single was Underneath the Radar. Um, this is the seven inch, this is the US seven inch for it. And I also have the 12 inch for it. Um, this song did pretty well. Um, it did really well in Australia. It got to like number five in Australia. Um, US, I think it only made it to like 75 or something. Um, but you'll recognize this song, I'm sure. This, the song charted, it did, it did okay. Um, and then they released their album which is Underneath the Radar, is the name of the full album as well. I have it both on vinyl, which I just barely got um, a month or two ago, and then also um, I have it on CD. Um, and this is a pretty good album. Um, it's, you know, it's got some real, you can hear the electronic influence in it. Um, you know, the, the, the influence of, of Kraftwerk and in, in Human League, there's a lot of lot of heavy synth underneath it, but there's also a lot of guitar, a lot of heavy guitar, especially on this album. And um, you know, I mean, some of the songs on here, "Glory, Glory" was a good song. Um, I think it got a seven-inch single release, but didn't chart underneath the radar. And um, yeah, those are the only singles off of this album, I believe. Uh, but really a pretty good album um, got some really good beats to it and some good screaming guitar on top of it too so um, I know that underneath the radar the single um, would get a lot of play in clubs I played it all the time uh, so you know some great great music coming out of there they signed with Sire Records these are all on Sire um, and um, they did that first album and then they came back and they released another album. And this album is called Change the Weather. And this is actually my favorite album of these four of the two Frewer and the two Underworld um, albums. This is my favorite one. This has got a lot of really great tunes on it. Uh, Change the Weather, the title track, of course. Stand Up, which is the... Um, which, which is the only single off that album. Um, this has got some, a, a, a couple good um, remixes on it, um, but this is, this is the 12 inch for Stand Up. Um, but there's, there's, I mean, there's just tons of great songs on this album. Um, Stand Up, Fever, Original Song, Mercy, uh, Mr. Universe, Texas, Thrash, which actually, um, Thrash actually did get a single, but I don't think it really went anywhere. Um, and it actually, Thrash actually appeared on um, Sire Records' Winter Sampler. Um, I can't remember if it was just Say Yes or if it was just Say Mao. It was on one of them. Uh, it was on one of those Sire uh, Winter Samplers. Um, and I believe it was a remix on there. I, I looked, I couldn't find it. I have it, but it, my, my CDs are kind of spread all over the basement right now. Um, but yeah, this is a, an amazing album. Um, Soul Survivor, Beach, uh, just some really, really great tunes. 
And um, so, so that's U.S. pressing. And then also back in the day, I actually ended up picking up a German pressing of that album on CD. Um, I actually got this one a long time ago um, when it first came out. So um, they also did a song on another, uh, on a, um, on the, the soundtrack for a movie called Wild Orchid. I have that CD and I, for the life of me, also cannot find it. Um, but that is a track that is not on any of these other releases. Um, and uh, if I can remember it, it was a pretty good one. Uh, so, after this album, uh, Sire dropped them. Um, left them in quite a bit of debt because they had dropped, they had spent all this money on a studio and stuff. And I was reading an interview with Carl Hyde um, this week, and he, he ended up working for Terry Nunn from Berlin on some of her solo work. And then he ended up touring with Debbie Harry um, while on her solo tours, playing guitar for him. And he was doing all that while Rick Smith, his partner in the band, um, was looking for new ways to do music and really get back to their roots. Um, if you ask these guys, they would kind of rather forget that the underworld MK1, as they call it now, um, ever really happened. They, they did not like the sound, which is sad because I, I think they're, that underworld stuff is, is great. I think it's amazing. Um, but they didn't like it. It wasn't what they wanted. I think they kind of ended up kind of modifying what they wanted to do to meet record company demands. Um, and so... While he was touring to earn money to pay off the debts, uh, Rick was working in um, working there in London with uh, DJs there in London, and they kind of started forming more and more of this electronic sound. And they came back and they started p putting out 12 inches, um, just taking them to the clubs and saying, "Hey, play this. We play this. We play this." They weren't even on a label; they were just getting the records pressed and and, and sticking them out there, and um, they started getting really big in the underground dance music scene. And um, they were, again, kind of not using a name for their band. And somehow it ended up that they just got called Underworld again. And <clears throat> so just the two of them with another with a third guy from, D, from uh, a DJ, they got in, they started doing all these underground mixes and they formed and they started releasing stuff. Then Danny Boyle, um, called them and said, hey, we want to put this, this song in our movie Train Spotting. And uh, so they put Born Slippy dot Knox in uh, Train Spotting and it become it became a massive hit. Uh, and and so Underworld has continued on in that fashion to this day. They're still this electronic dance music uh, band. I don't actually have any of their releases um, after this, um, just because all that stuff started happening in the late mid to late nineties when I kind of stopped buying records. So I don't have any of that. Um, eventually I'll pick some up. Um, their earlier sound, I think you can hear a lot of those early influences and you can, you can hear where they, how they got to where they are today with Born Slippy and all of their subsequent stuff. Um, it's really interesting, um, to see, for me, to see how uh, musicians kind of change over time um, and modify their sounds. And these guys are a, a great example of that. Um, let me know what you think. If you like Underworld, like the video. If, you, uh, if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. Um, and uh, I look forward to hearing from you. And remember, you spin me around like a record, baby.